I'm embarrassed to admit that in our smart van, we've been using a hot sauce bottle on the kitchen counter to determine if we're level. Have you ever done that? Well, not anymore. What if you could have a completely interactive display to show you your vehicle's pitch and roll? And better yet, it can even determine how many blocks you need under each wheel. Well, stick around to the last bite and I'll show you how to make that Home Assistant leveling dashboard. Say hello to Tilty. This is an M5 Stack Core 2 version 1.1. It's based on a dual core ESP32 and features a two inch capacitive touchscreen. It also features a 500 milliamp internal battery, lots of connectivity, an expansion port, and most importantly, an IMU, an inertial measurement unit with six degrees of freedom. That's three axes of gyroscope and three axes of accelerometer. And if you just tap the screen, you could see I've basically built a fancy bubble level. Now for what we're doing today, we don't really need a screen, but it makes for a much better demo. Plus the M5 Stack Core 2 has everything built in, the battery, the screen, and the IMU. If you want to follow along or create your own version of this leveling project, you don't have to spend all the money on an M5 Stack Core 2. All you really need is a microprocessor and an IMU. We're going to be using ESP Home to program this device, so you're going to need an ESP microcontroller. We're going to be using an I2C bus to communicate from our ESP microcontroller to the IMU. And I should note that ESP8266s have software I2C buses, which should work with an IMU, but ESP32s have dedicated hardware I2C buses, and this is probably the better choice. Plus, ESP Home isn't even recommending ESP8266s anymore in general, so grab yourself an ESP32. As for the IMU, the Core 2 includes a built-in MPU6886, but M5 Stack also sells that same MPU as a standalone module that has a nice little I2C connection built right in. There are also other IMU modules that are supported directly in ESP Home, and I'll leave links in the description. So grab yourself an IMU and an ESP microcontroller, and let's take a look at the software side of things. I just want to take a quick sec to say thanks to all Smarty Van members, especially our top tier members. If you want to support the channel directly, click the join button down below. And I have another exciting project coming using the M5 Stack Core 2, so be sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss that one. All right, let's get back to work. All right, well, looking at this digital bubble level is cool, I guess, but the real magic is what's going on inside and being sent wirelessly to Home Assistant. So let's switch over to Home Assistant and take a look at this ESP Home device and the sensors it's creating. All right, so over in Home Assistant, I'm looking at the device page for this ESP device that we call Tilty. And you can see a bunch of sensors have been created. At the bottom, we have the van roll and van pitch. Positive numbers indicate nose down and rolling to the right, while negative numbers indicate nose up and rolling to the left. Then we have a binary sensor, which shows if the van is level or not. And that's using the pitch and roll to determine if we're level within a certain tolerance. In our van, we've decided that 1.5 degrees will consider level. Above that, we have four sensors that show how much lift is required under each wheel to achieve level, and that's measured in inches. Above that, you can see four more sensors that show how many blocks would be required under each wheel to achieve level. Everyone's got a different number of blocks and style of blocks, and in our case, we're using two sets of go treads, which are traction boards that have four sections each. So we have a total of eight blocks, but they must be used in groups of four because we can't separate them. So the algorithm of Tilty takes that into consideration. I'll show you later how you can customize the number of blocks you have and if they're in sets. This way, Tilty will only recommend using a number of blocks that's feasible given your setup. Above that, we have battery level and battery charging sensors, and that's for the M5 Stack Core 2 that has a built-in battery. You won't necessarily have those sensors if you're using an ESP that's on house power. If we head over to the cab dashboard, we can see these sensors and entities in action. On the right side, we see the pitch and roll using Home Assistant gauges and segments to help determine the color based on the degree of pitch or roll. Then we can see if the van is level or not in this binary sensor, the tilty battery level, and the backlight controls for the M5 Stack Core 2. On the left side is where the real magic happens. This is a picture entity card with a per wheel recommendation of how many blocks are required. And the algorithm will never suggest more blocks than you have available. We also show the number of inches required per wheel. And in the center, there's another indicator that indicates if we're considered level. And again, that's within our 1.5 degrees of tolerance. All right, so let's take a quick look at what's going on in ESP Home to make all of this happen. 
All right, let's take a look at my ESP Home configuration. I'm going to focus on the IMU and the logic part of this configuration, but if you want to take a look at any of the other parts, especially for the M5 Stack Core 2, I'll leave a link in the description to my full configuration. All right, the first thing we need to do is to activate the I squared C component. This component is gonna allow your IMU to communicate with the ESP microcontroller. You'll set the GPIO pins here for your specific ESP microcontroller. Then we'll take a look at the sensor component where I'm defining the MPU6886 platform. That's the IMU that I'm using in the M5 Stack Core 2. And if you're using a different IMU, you'll set that platform here. ESP Home supports a variety of IMUs and I'll leave a link to a list of those down below. Then you'll have to set an address of your particular hardware. Depending on the IMU you have, this address might change. The update interval I've set to 50 milliseconds, meaning I want to pull that hardware for its data every 50 milliseconds. And we're pulling the accelerometer X, Y, and Z. And we're setting sensors here. I'm leaving these internal so that these particular sensors don't make it over to Home Assistant. Then I'm doing some basic filtering. I'm using the sliding window moving average, which is going to help smooth out the data coming off that sensor, as well as the delta filter, which requires that the sensor has kept its value for this duration. Next, we're going to define some template sensors. This is where we're going to set up our pitch and roll based on the accelerometer data. We're using a lambda here to do some basic math to figure out those pitch and roll degrees. And we're updating this information every 50 milliseconds as well. If we scroll down further, there's some more template sensors where we're defining lift in inches per wheel. We update those every 50 milliseconds as well and apply the same sliding window moving average filters. Then the lambda is where all the math happens to determine the lift in inches using the bubble pitch and roll from above. Going down a bit further, we have an interval. This is a component in ESP Home that lets you perform an action at a set interval. We're setting this to 50 milliseconds like everything else, and then we have a big long lambda. The top of this lambda is dealing with the display for the M5 Stack Core 2, so you may not even need that part. And down below that is where we do the actual block and lift calculations. First, we set an array with our lift in inches calculations from the sensors above, and then we calculate the blocks needed for each wheel. Below that, we're tracking and assigning sets of blocks to wheels. If you remember, we have two sets of four blocks, but we can't separate those blocks. So this math is assigning sets of blocks to each wheel based on the groups available. Then we sort the wheels by need, and then we're doing a round robin of assignment, going around to the wheel with the highest need and assigning blocks to that wheel within the allotted number of sets. Finally, we publish this information to block recommendation template sensors up above in this configuration, and those are the actual sensors that will be sent to Home Assistant. There's a lot of math going on here, and it's understandable if you're not completely following all this, but that's okay because I've set up everything using globals, so all you really need to do is modify the value of these globals. There's one for wheelbase, which is the distance between the front and rear axles of your vehicle, the track, which is the distance between your left and right wheel on one axle, and then we have the max available blocks. This is where you can set the number of blocks you have available, and that will be used in the algorithm. You can also set the number of blocks per set. If you're like us and you have sets of blocks that are connected together, you can set the global here for how many blocks are in a set. That way between total blocks per set and max available blocks, the algorithm will know how many blocks you have available and how many sets they have to stay in. Then we can set the block height in inches. The reality is once we stack our four blocks together and put the weight of the van on it, we only get about 3.3 inches of lift. And if we divide that by the four blocks available, we know that each block is worth about 0.825 inches of lift. So we set that value here. Finally, we can set a tolerance level in degrees. We set ours to 1.5 degrees, and this allows a tolerance of plus minus 1.5 degrees on pitch or roll to consider us level. I will link to this entire configuration down in the description below so that you can read through it and use the parts that you need. You might not be using a device with a screen or battery or any of that to manage, so you can just pull the IMU and the logic part. All right, let's go back to the Home Assistant dashboard for a little deeper dive. If you want to set up a Home Assistant dashboard similar to ours, let's go over the cards that we used. First, we're using Home Assistant native gauge cards to show the pitch and roll. We'll set a minimum and a maximum number of degrees that the gauge should show. And if we click the show code editor, you can see I'm using segments to define the color based on the pitch or roll degrees. That helps us look quickly at the pitch and roll gauges and see just how out of level we are. We're using tile cards to show the binary sensor tilty van level, as well as the battery level of the device. 
Below that we're using another tile card to show the state of the backlight and the controls for the brightness. Then over on the left, we're using a picture elements card. And if you look at the card options, you can set a picture that is the base of this card. And I'm using an overhead orthographic view of the van. I'll leave a link to this image down in the description below if you want to use it as well. Then we're using a conditional card, and the condition is whether the van is level or not using that binary sensor called Tilty Van Level. And if the van is level, then we're going to show this custom mushroom template card, which shows the thumbs up and the words level right in the center here. The other four cards in this picture element cards are mushroom template cards as well, and that template looks like this. We're using some Jinjo logic here to set the icon based on the state of the sensor, and we do the same for the icon color. And then we set the main information as the number of blocks recommended, and the secondary information as the number of inches required to lift the wheel. Finally, we add the Tilty logo at the top, and now you have a complete digital dashboard to show the state of your vehicle level, including recommendations of how many blocks are needed. I'll leave a link to my full YAML configuration for this dashboard, as well as the image of the van, down in the description below. Alright, the last thing to do, of course, is to figure out where to put this device. It needs to be true to the van and oriented correctly. We'll probably mount ours under the kitchen counter, where we have access to power. And I think I'm going to save this device with its built-in screen and battery, and switch to a standalone ESP32 with an MPU6886. But you could just disable the screen and use this device as is. Alright, well that's how you level your smart without hot sauce. Click subscribe, and until next time, safe travels.